an eerie silence as we drove through Gaza City at night. It's Thursday evening. Usually these streets would be bustling. Not tonight. The usual signs of life replaced by those of destruction. We went to spend the night with Nedir and Shirin Abu Sido and their five children. They live in Gaza City, an ordinary family in an ordinary part of town, living in extraordinary times. I have never seen days like this in all my time in Gaza. Of course, there have been airstrikes before, but never so continuous with this intensity. As a father, I want to protect my children. When there are strikes, I talk to them, tell them it will be okay. They are so scared, so I just sit close to them until it stops. For the first time in three days, there was electricity in the house. A chance for the family to see in full what's happening all around them. The effects of the noises they hear all day and all night. While the rest of the world watches the images of this war in horror, for people here, this is the reality of what awaits them beyond their front doors. And although they refuse to give up, Israel's blockade of goods and supplies is making even the simplest of tasks difficult. Our lives were hard before, under the siege. Now they are even worse. My children are so afraid, so I hold them in my arms and stroke their hair. We all sleep together. At least we have electricity right now. But that didn't last long. The power out, a cue for bedtime. I'm scared of the noise. I'm scared a missile will hit right next to us and kill us. All the windows shake. Mama. Luna is two years old. She knows a handful of words. I asked her what she's afraid of. Israeli planes, she said, and the rockets. We filmed the strikes through the night from the family's window, a series of air and naval attacks in the east of the city. But the kids slept through it, a mixture of exhaustion after six sleepless nights, an admission that staying up won't stop the noises. So we had a relatively calm night. The kids got about five hours sleep, which is more than they've been getting in the past six days. But they wake up to the reality of the fact that there's still no electricity, there's no water, there's nothing for them to do, and really there's nowhere safe for them to go. Maybe worst of all, they wake up to the fact that they have no idea what's to come next, whether today will be the day that Israel increases its military activity here, whether one of their strikes will hit their home or their family's home or their neighbor's home. So in some ways, it's as if the night was just the beginning, just the easy part. Shireen Tadros, Al Jazeera, Gaza City.